Joining us for a couple of seconds, Dr. Brian Salvatore from Louisiana State University in Shreveport, uh, environmental activist. Hey, Dr. Brian, how are you this morning? Hi, good morning. So the, the plan for Camp Minden, such as it is, seems to be rather fluid. We've got another change. Tell us about it. Is it a, is it a good idea? Uh, well, yes. Uh, last time uh, you and I talked was the morning of the explosion. The in the explosive incident, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and, and it was kind of in between a, uh, a rapid burn and an explosion. And uh, so as a result of that, they really became aware that the clean burning igniter was a lot less stable than people had surmised and so it we, we call it called for an emergency action and uh, the last two weeks the chemical explosive safety board from the army was out there and inspected everything and they're the only ones that have been in the area where those bunkers are and they've decided that everything needs to be destroyed in place meaning they're going to set those bunkers on fire and it's going to burn they're going to leave the door open and it's going to burn very rapidly it's possible it could explode but very unlikely but it's not anything that anybody's happy about there were a lot of grim faces in the room last night but there's no better alternative that will prevent people from being killed or injured that are on site the when 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 you say when you use the term set it on fire what what exactly does that mean? What's the what's the protocol? What's the process? Well, there's a uh, a DOD team from Fort Polk that's going to come up, and they're professionals, and they're going to put uh, explosive charges in. They're going to open a door and put them inside, and and uh, set them off by remote control. Okay, so pardon me. Who's going down in there now? Is, are we going to send a robot down? Maybe condemned prisoners? Exactly. Who puts the charges in the bunkers? Well, these will be professional explosive experts from Fort Polk, and they've been assigned to do it, and they're going to open the door. They're not going to enter the bunkers, but they're going to set them uh, on top of the pile, and then they're just going to get out of there. Are, are we going to do it all at once, which I think would be yeah. kind of awesome, actually, given the, right. given the light show that we had when we had the incident a fortnight ago? Is, is this going to be a time? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, uh, well. Uh, one of the, the bunkers is over where the burn chamber is because they were actually using this CBI to ignite the material in the burn chamber. And so they had 800 pounds sitting over there all the time, and they had to move that to a nearby bunker. So that there's just 820 pounds in that one. They're going to do that one first. Is, that could be as early as next week. Is 820 pounds, just to give me a frame of reference, is 820 pounds a lot? How many total pounds of it are there? What's right. the what's the time frame for doing it all? Right. Well, 820 pounds is not a lot. That's one super sack. Uh, but altogether, there's about 240,000 pounds, and that includes 40,000 pounds of M6, the material that has not only nitrocellulose but a, a lot of uh, toxins in it as well that we fought so hard to prevent them from setting on fire. But in this case, it's necessary that this be done. Let me ask you, that's, that was what I wanted to focus on, was the what's going to be in the air? Where does it go? Is it any kind of a health danger? Yeah, uh, well, nitrocellulose is the main component of CBI, and that's about 80% of what's out there. Uh, in, in this particular set of bunkers. So it's going to generate mostly uh, carbon monoxide and nitrogen, but there'll be some impurities. There'll be some carbon monoxide, which, you know, we don't open our, we, we don't turn our cars on before we open our garage doors because of carbon monoxide, but that'll turn into carbon dioxide over the course of a half hour or so. And then there's also going to be some hydrogen cyanide that will be released. And uh, that's a... Hydrogen cyanide? Yeah. Aaron wants to know if that's as bad as it sounds. Well, it is It is uh, bad, but it's not the major burn component. It's just because when things are burned in a pile like this, this these nitrogen-containing compounds, they will produce some hydrogen cyanide. So this is what we were talking about 
at the meeting the, the last two nights, and the EPA is going to be monitoring for it. But this is why nobody's going to be in the area. What will people see, Brian? What will they see and, and hear? how many times will they see it over how long uh, a stretch, uh, over how long a span? Well, they're going to see, see maybe maybe something, but they're going to do this in the early morning, but it'll probably be light, so it won't. It won't be like it looked the other day when something exploded at 5 in the morning. It won't be that early. Uh, it, it's going to be done three separate days. The earliest they would possibly do it would, would start with the little bunker next Tuesday, but they may do sometime next week, and they're going to let everybody know. And then uh, this, the uh, Saturday, you know, next Saturday, not tomorrow, uh, is another target date. And then the following Saturday, the, the 29th, is the other target date. But. Brian, Brian, on the 1 to 10 acceptability to environmental watchdog Brian Salvatore scale, is this a 2? Is this a 5? Is this an is this an 8? How do you assess this? Well, seeing that there is no better option other than letting that stuff sit there for the next century and go off one at a time, I would say this has to be... A, attend because this is the, the best decision we have and nobody has any I, a better idea this wasn't going to be moved and burned in the uh igniter that's what you're saying it was that's but that won't work plan. because it's so unstable that's right that explosion that happened was a, a warning that was heated and it needs to be heated